Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to walk you through one of the intricacies of building with asynchronous counters, um, and that's the, the fact that we have the ripple effect. And while that's in the PowerPoint um, for Project Lead, the way it's it's easy to miss and it's hard to, to really identify whenever it's actually affecting your circuit. The whole idea behind the ripple effect is the idea that, you know, in, in our mind, when we're looking at like a one millisecond time level, okay, when we zoom out, um, one millisecond for us is really quick for electronics, not that fast, okay? So for us, we're going to see like these probes and our counters change simultaneously to us. OK, and it's going to everything's going to be lined up with the clock. But if we zoomed way, 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 way in, what we would notice is that we have what's called propagation delay. It, it takes time for the signal to pass from the clock to the first flip flop out to the second flip flop out to the third. And so if we zoom way in like 100 nanosecond level, here is our time, our time level. OK, we would notice that in the process of flipping over from seven back to zero, that it actually passes through the number six and four first before it gets there. OK, so there's a little bit of a delay as we wait for the, the, the signal to ripple down to the circuit, okay? That's the idea of the ripple effect, and here's one application. So our goal here is to create a 5 to 0 down counter, something that counts downward from 5 to 0 using the 74LS74N. So we're in small-scale integration here. And the problem is that the ripple effect is going to come into play. So let's talk a little bit about design first. You'll notice that I have a lot of this set up already. I also have, I have a Q, positive Q, going to positive edge trigger in each of these cases. So that means we're going to count downward. So let's talk about then our boundaries. If we want to count down from five to zero, what you'll notice is this. Without the NAND gate, this thing would want to count down seven all the way to zero, and then would have flipped back to seven, count all the way down to zero, and just keep repeating itself, right? Well, we want to start here, and we're going to go five, four, three, two, one, zero. So the problem is this, if we're, if we're coding with asynchronous counters by now, you probably understand that we go one number beyond what our last one is. So the thing is going to reset is the next number in the series, okay? Well, what's, what's one number beyond zero? Most of the kids would tell you in this case, the next number is five. That's a great guess, okay? But the problem is, is that five doesn't appear in, until you tell it to appear. The number that's actually one number beyond zero is the number seven. Okay, so seven has to be our passcode, which is easy because it's just one, one, one in binary. Okay, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to tie all three of these to Q. All right, so there's Q connected. This one's going to be connected to Q. And this one's going to be connected to Q. Now my passcode is seven. Okay, seven, instead of repeat, appearing, it's going to go seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And instead of seven appearing, it's going to reset. So now the question is, what do we want to reset to? And in this case, we want to reset not to the number seven, but to the number five. Okay, so five in binary, this is the four spot. So I would need a one here, nothing here. I would need a one here in this preset. Let me get this text box out of the way. It's kind of causing issues. There we go. So I would need to then tie into one, zero, one, or preset, clear, preset. Okay, so let's go do that then. Here's this is going to go to preset. Second one's going to go to clear. Third one is going to go to preset. Here we go. Now, I can't just leave this clear. Whoop, let's not click. I can't leave this clear and this preset and this clear just unattended. I have to tell it something, what it needs to be. So I'm going to tie these three to five volts just to get them out of the way. So there's one, two, and three that way they're not confused about what their signal is supposed to be so everything logically says this should work but the issue is when i hit play we're going to notice it doesn't behave this way three oh, wait a second five four why is it stopping at four that's not my passcode and the problem is look watch see that's blipping we're seeing this little thing turn off Okay, so that means with this NAND gate that we must be meeting all three of these conditions. Somehow, we are going five, four, seven. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to watch the three probes at the top, and you'll notice. You see how all three of them flash on for a split second? That's the ripple effect. See, what's happening is, is this thing is in the process of changing from the number four which is this, to the number three, which is one, one, zero. 
And the problem is, is these two will turn on. This one becomes a one first, and then this one turns on, and then this one's supposed to turn off. Well, guess what? In the split second before this one is able to turn off while the signal is rippling down, we have one, one, one. For just a split second, we hit the number seven, which means our command is met, our condition is met, which means this blips out a zero, which means we reset to the number five. So the question then is, how do we address this? How in the world do we fix this problem? Because I don't know what else to do, right? Well, the, the fix for the ripple effects in this particular lesson, okay, the easiest fix that I found when working with students is to add in a tougher condition, make it more difficult to meet that condition. And the easiest way to do that is to go here and add a fourth flip-flop. We're going to turn this into a four-bit circuit. So I'm going to take this and just drag it down a little bit farther. And some of the color coding is going to be lost because I'm working quickly. So I apologize about that. I'm not going to be as nice and neat as I was with my previous setup. But I'm going to take Q0. I'm going to wrap it around a D. That way I have a divide by two circuit. I'm going to take clock and tie it to the previous Q so it'll count down. I'm going to take Q and connect it now to the eights spot. I can take a probe. You know what? I haven't used orange yet in a while, so I'm going to copy this probe. I'm going to take it, just tie it here so I can see what's going on with my eights digit. I need to worry about the preset clear, and I also need to make this condition a little bit more difficult. So I'm just going to right-click and replace this component. Instead of a NAND 3, I'm going to make it a NAND 4. Click OK. Now I have four conditions that need to be met instead of three. Okay. Now I kind of messed up a little bit with my wiring. That looks weird. There we go. That's a little bit better. Drag this out. So again, this isn't, it's not pretty, but I'm trying to work quick here. Okay. We have a fourth condition that needs to be met. And the fourth condition would be now, instead of counting 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, it would flip back over to 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, because I have a four-digit number, right? So the next number would be 15, which would be 1, 1, 1, 1, okay? So I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to look for Q coming out of this one as well. Now, the thing is, it's never going to meet that command. You're never going to get 15 out of this, really, except for the reset portion of the circuit. Now... I need to do preset and clear. When I reset this, I want to still go to the number four or five, five, right? So I don't need anything in the eight spot. That means I need to tie this into clear. Let's just connect there. This can't be left alone. So I need to tie that back into five volts. Let's go find where that signal is right there. It'd be a good spot to lock in. So I come over here, lock in right there. Now that's tied to five volts. Now I have everything connected just like I did. It's just a little bit more difficult, okay? And what's going to happen is this. In the process, okay, what, what needs to happen in order to reset the circuit is I have to have 1111 now. We're not going to meet that condition accidentally with the ripple effect. So you'll see that it still gets, I mean, we still see the blip happen here. Okay, if you notice quickly between 4 and 3, it hits 7 for just a split second. 5, 4, Three, two, one, zero. But because of that fourth flip flop now, we don't have to worry about it. In fact, you see the number F appear just briefly, right? As it takes time for that circuit to realize, oh, I've met the command. Okay. So that's the ripple effect. That's an easy way to fix it. Hopefully that makes sense, helps you eliminate some of the headaches that you're going to see when you start working with counters. I highly encourage you to assign the five to zero down counter if you're a teacher in your digital electronics class, just because it's a great way to teach the ripple effect and how it affects circuits and how, you know, it should be taken seriously. Hopefully this helps. If you got any questions, um, I guess you can email me if you know me.